Keith. Welcome to another to another session of some sort of talk show. Yay! I'm stuck out here in space. My name is Tyler. I am the host of the show, I guess. Um, and I am joined today by Andrew. Hi. There he is. Um, and today Way we Way are... delayed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, you're delayed in my Discord. Well, that's, yeah, that's the feed from the Discord. So that's weird. Um, today we're talking about a uh, story, uh, once again, story. But this time it's the stories that we had to fill in as a kid. So there's a lot of times in which before a child is even introduced to a video game or even to a movie, they are usually read stories. And those are generally written pretty well to the point where the child can just kind of lose themselves to um, the fantasy and just roll into it. But um, then once the kid grows up, then they are subjected to movies which and video games, which are, um, in my opinion, kind of chopped for time and uh, budget, I guess, also. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, Ch children's stories are usually cheaper and shorter. <laughs> so it does, it does leave room for the audience to kind of fill in certain gaps, which also creates critics, because instead of filling in the gaps, they just say, I didn't like it because it had that gap. Meh. That's a topic for a different time. <laughs> So, um, I, I'm going to focus mostly on um, a, video, a childhood video game of mine in which it was, it was actually really well written, but because of its open world type scenario, you would kind of miss bits and pieces of it. And so I would okay. have to, shut up you. <laughs> um, you would have to fill in, or I would have to fill in the gaps because I didn't exactly follow the, sto the storyline. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Um, and then uh, I'll just, you know, I'll turn it over to Andrew and see if uh, he comes up with a similar story. I need to set a timer. Yeah, yeah you go first. I don't have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of. Okay. <clears throat> it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm basically just pulling stuff out of my butt right now. All right, so... Well, um, as long as you game. as long as you wash your hands for twenty seconds, you'll be right. And don't touch your face or mouth. <gasps> ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it, Man, it, it hasn't what? been <laughs> because of all this. I now note. I now notice how much I, I actually I'm super conscious of how often I touch my face and mouth, <laughs> <laughs> and I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not so. The delay is. It's just delayed from from getting from discord to twitch so i don't think there's a delay otherwise because i can hear you perfectly fine it's well it's no the, the audio the audio is fine the, it's just the, the visual even on dis even on um even on the discord like you're talking and then the visual of you talking happens like one second later so i don't know what the i don't know what's causing that this is a, that's the first yeah. time I've ever seen this happen in that scenario. You know, it just it just yeah. takes a long time right. to transmit data to outer space. <laughs> it's it's going through a whole bunch of things. <laughs> Actually, I don't really care for that aesthetic right now. Um, I also don't want to lose my stuff. All right, so the game is. I lost the game. Sorry. You know, it's it's been like four years. I, I believe that we could all just pour one out for four years. <laughs> we now have to we now have to take down. It's been it's been X number of it's been X number of days since. <laughs> Move it back to zero. Um, yeah. The game, Elder Scrolls Morrowind. For the, oh, <laughs> for the Xbox. Yeah, I okay. I can see. There, because so, there is there is story in that, but there is there's a lot, a, there's a lot. ton of story, and I would argue that for for the budget of what was it, 2012, 2001. <laughs> Not yeah, it wasn't 2012. But like for the budget back then, and for their 
yeah. you know, for their relatively uh, golden eye <laughs> graphics, like they're they, 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 they were able to they're able to do a lot with that game uh, and put a yeah. lot in it. Um. So yeah, so just as a kind of a preface, yes, the the game actually does have a ton of story, but as like an 11 year old, wait, 2011? 2002. 2002, 12 year old. Um, I don't really yeah. pay attention that much, but my older friends, yeah, you know, they would, they would sit there and they'd go, I, I just, I just read every single book in the library and there's so so much more happening in this yeah. world than we thought there, that there was happening and that was just in the books those are like optional things that you and, didn't even think you could interact with for like the first hour of the game yeah and they're like actual books <laughs> <laughs> um i mean they're not that they're longer than a they're like some of them are like a like a novella like it's like the amount of effort that went into the details of those games is is ridiculous, and it, I appreciate it. But it's also, like, can you just tell me where to go? <laughs> I don't know where to go. <laughs> so yeah, and then I what am also I supposed did, to do? I also did have those friends that were just like, so I just followed the main storyline, and you know, here's basically what you can expect to see. And I was like, oh man, that sounds like a really cool storyline. I want to play this game too. So I jump in, <laughs> and probably just like a majority of the player base instead of setting down on my mission statement of like i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna do this mission i'm gonna do this main quest line nope immediately off the rails yeah so we begin with so it's actually it's it's appropriate that we're talking about this after because that's kind of what the witcher is about too there's just so many side missions that you can have three entire games worth of side missions. <laughs> yeah, so so Morrowind was my first um, was my first open world type thing where you could you yeah. could totally start the main mission and then just abandon it midway. And it, I don't know. Right. <laughs> Those are always kind of weird. But um, so within this whole thing, um, I. Uh, let me just do one more little preface first. So um, I originally started this topic under the guise of I was I, I was tempted to try to say that I was going to do one of the Mario games, like one of the early Mario games, because you kind of are unless you actually had the box and the map and the pamphlet that was like, oh, this oh, uh, where it this, explains this, what's this happening. This crazy turtle dragon turned all the denizens into these into into brick blocks, and you have You're to go like through. Like original Super Mario Brothers, like yeah. the, the for the, the for the NES, yeah. yeah just like because they Cause did because Super did Mario World establish, gives you some story. Yeah, they did try to establish a story, but then by the time you Super Mario Three, they gave you there was a story. By the time, yeah, um, which which one was it? Where by the end of it, they were like, ah, princess is in another castle. Is that definitely definitely one? One. Yeah, original Super Mario Brothers. I didn't yeah. feel like they had a big um, emphasis on store on their on whatever story premise they had. They were just like, eh, no. it's a run, it's a run, jump and step on stuff game. Let's let them yeah, have this, fun this, with that. This monster stole the princess. Go save the princess. You and gotta get through the level. That was yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's perfectly fine. But for you know, for a kid with um, with my sort of mentality, I kind of need a storyline to kind of. Give me motivation to keep going. Otherwise, dying okay, as many yeah. times as you do, uh, it yeah. makes continuing the game really hard. Okay. Yeah, you can't just shut your brain off and just do it. But that makes I sense. failed to remember what story I had driven up as to why I was stepping on things' heads, and I never actually did get to the princess because even at a young age, I was really bad at the game, and then we reestablish how bad I was at the game when we tried to play it for drifters in a game space. Yeah. <laughs> so, so enters um, probably like five years later, Mar Morrowind for the Xbox. Um, 
so you have a bunch of different characters available. Some people like to choose the dark elf because you know they're they're dark elves. They look badass and they can shoot fireballs from their hands. Um, other people just want to choose like the Nord because they actually have a bunch of different buffs and they just look like a badass Viking dude. The Nord were the humans, right? Uh, the well, the Nord, the Bretons, and the Red Guard were all humans. Oh, okay. They're all right. So it's like Norsemen, Englishmen. Okay, literally. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And. I went with the Argonians, the ones that look like badass dragon people. <laughs> Even yeah. though that's kind of the default that I go to. You can tell me that they're lizards, but they're dragons to me. <laughs> they're, right. they're little dragon people. Um and so in in the first <laughs> couple in the first couple of like I think it's not even thirty minutes in, like almost two minutes in you're kind of introduced to the fact that you're in Morrowind this is basically like pre-civil war like southern <laughs> southern area like there's a, <laughs> yeah there's a, there's a there's a bunch of different people that think they're in a different hierarchy than a bunch of other people and all those lower hierarchy people are doing hard labor <laughs> right <laughs> um <laughs> And I just happened to pick the character that was a part of that demographic. And so there was a whole bunch yeah. of racism thrown at me immediately. That <laughs> I would like to credit um, Bethesda for the way they wrote Morrowind. Because despite all of the um, the racism, the, you know, and the derogatory remarks, they wrote it in a way that they actually created their own language. So that even a kid who's, you know, 12 or 13 it just goes right over their head, you know, it's just like, Oh, he called me a funny day, but you just kind of move on. Whereas yeah. an older, whereas an older player would look at that and go, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm going to shove my spoon in his spleen. <laughs> a spoon spleen. Um, spoon spoon. But that is the one thing I didn't do upon immediately going to this game. Cause you usually yeah. when you're, when you're told that what, Morrowind specifically is by your peers who had already played it. You're told like one of three, if not all three of these things at once, which is you can go anywhere you want. There is no real like storyline. You can attack anybody you want. You can kill anybody you want. And um, the other, the third one had to do with like stuff. Oh, you can steal anything. <laughs> anything those are usually the three things that are like what a child tells another child why you should play Morrowind yes yeah. <laughs> you have freedom of to do anything and it's you can shoot fireballs from your hands <laughs> right uh, but the one thing I didn't do which I saw a bunch of other people do which is why I didn't do it is immediately go up to someone upon getting um, freedom of your character and stabbing someone or punching them <laughs> right because at the beginning of the game you're kind of shoved off of this boat and you're told okay you survived the storm thing and now you've been granted um what's it called not amnesty but uh, basically your freedom the king has declared you free oh and, sure and yeah, yeah, yeah someone someone declared you free and but you kind of have to work for this organization called the blades now so it's whatever yeah. trade off um am i so you're not really given a weapon though but you are given some money to go to the nearby thing and like buy like a really stupid sword my friend didn't do that he just immediately walks up to a guy and goes hey give me your money and punches him i mean you know in real life says give me your money the character didn't say anything but it goes up punches him this peasant yeah. woman <laughs> this this wood elf like this wood elf just normal woman like drops whatever she's doing pulls out a little dagger goes you and why just starts like shanking him he goes oh, i didn't know that she would have a knife <laughs> Dude, yeah like, you think you think anybody <laughs> in the medieval times at, like went around anywhere without some sort of like you know she might have been going from she might have been going from the barn to her to her house to cut the bread like you don't think she's yeah. carrying a knife on her 
Um, but it's it's but that's just a little taste of you know the stories that we kind of had to fill in. You know, just just trying to right. make up reasons as to why this woman, this woman who is looks like she just got finished washing the clothes, has this knife, has this dagger in her cloak, and she's like, <laughs> "I'm gonna shake you." Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so when I started the game, I was a little more polite. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and um, what ended up happening though the main the main the main my main story that I ended up doing and I couldn't really get away from while I was playing Morrowind was I would create this Argonian character, and now that I was totally indoctrinated into the fact that um, the Khajiit and the Argonians are basically um, hunted down for slave labor by the Dark Elf caste. Um, right. I would create my, I would create my character, and I would immediately go get armored up somewhere, and well, I would, yeah. um, I just get a bow, I think, I believe that's what I did, because there was an oh, there was a nearby there was a nearby okay. plantation, and if you played on a certain difficulty level, everyone in this plantation had like the strongest form of weapon, which in that game I believe was the Daedric weapon, like. Cat. Got it. Okay. So you could go in there as, but your your character level doesn't change. There's nothing about your stats that change if you up the the, the difficulty level. So I went okay. there and okay. I was like, "Aha! I'm gonna free all. I'm gonna free all my 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 brothers and my sisters." And I go in there and I, you know, I start hitting people and they all one shot me because their weapons do like a hundred damage over my health yeah. bar. So I go, huh? Okay, so that didn't that didn't work out. <laughs> that was a failed that was a failed freedom attempt. Um, yeah. So then it became all right. So we've had we've had multiple attempts by by other by other brave souls to go in and free to free our to free our kin. So now that we know okay. these 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 this information, how do we better do that? Um, cool. There's a bunch of so now we start to kind of, you know, underground railroad, you know, how do we how do we free these guys without getting ourselves killed and then, you know, get away type of a thing in the in the in the dead of night. Um, yeah. So <laughs> in in my in my previous in incarnation, <laughs> I remembered that there are these large floating jellyfish looking things called netches. And Normally they're very passive, but there's one that's called the bull netch, the the male of the herd. And if you if you tick him off, he just kind of goes into a generic aggro state. So he doesn't necessarily yeah. target you, but he'll target anyone that's kind of in the area. And uh, okay. Um then kind of getting out of the story a little bit and just kind of going into the game meta, if you do piss it off and it starts to attack the npcs the npcs don't really know what to do about it because it's like i'm an npc it's an npc and it's a floating npc at that i don't really know how to attack it because they all have swords yeah. and stuff you know i don't think any of them had a bow at all so um yeah so that was the plan so in so we get off the boat and we all and you know and well we all in my head but it's just you know it's just my character we all gather in a, yeah. in a in a basement. And we start buying weapons for this for this lot for this grand um, uprising, and the plan mm -hmm. is to just kind of get either a dart, which they discontinued in previous iterations of Elder Scrolls games, which I'm disappointed in because I like the idea of throwing items. Um, oh yeah, but either to buy a cheap dart or to get like a like a really gross like maybe a bow that'll shoot three times before it like is inoperable um, oh, okay. and just yeah, shoot the thing yeah. at a distance and Got then it. Okay. Make, you know and make that thing real angry and start attacking everything in the village the only downside though is that there might be we we understood that there might be some casualties as far as the um plantation workers on the surface because they do have a bunch of them like in a cell underground but you know that's not yeah. <laughs> that's not here or there. Um, <laughs> so then the plan became all right. So we 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 tick that thing off. Um, 
and then we just cross our fingers and hope it doesn't target any of any of our kin and then we go in there right. and we just kind of help help the niche kind of you know slaughter all <laughs> slaughter all of the plantation worker or um owners and then we just yeah. free everyone so we so that's what we did we went in there shut the thing and the nest starts to go crazy and starts to shoot this little gross <laughs> goo thing down at the people that it can't reach and by the time the first yeah. person died daedric longsword drops to the floor and i just just run in there nah, 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 and just grab <laughs> it pick it up and now i'm armed with a thing that does that does twice their health bar and so now i run around like ha ha how does this feel to do yeah. twice your health bar <laughs> and you know then everything kind of pers- you know then i have to like run up and somehow try to um oh no i had a i had a bow so that's how the netch was destroyed um we just shot the netch to make it stop <laughs> going on a rampage and kill it okay um but yeah so then you know kill kill all the all the other owners and then fa- one dude has this key ring and you pick up the key ring and you can go down and you can take all the all the neck braces off of your you know off of the argonians and the khajiit and you just kind of you yeah. just kind of feel good inside without any you know without any sort of contact you're just like yeah i yeah i, I slaughtered slave owners there's it could have been probably done more diplomatically, but I still there's still a, a little twinge of thing that feels feels good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that people aren't walking around all sad faced. The only the only problem with the coding, as far as the game goes, is that once you freed them, they just kind of stood there, like they didn't try to leave the area. <laughs> oh, okay. So it that kind of. Um, suspended the fantasy a little bit where you were like okay. yeah now we now we run away and yeah kind of, kind of <laughs> thank you friend <laughs> excellent <laughs> um huh but yeah so that entire so that entire revolution happened without the prompt of the game itself like i think what you're actually supposed to do is you're supposed to go on this like five real or like this two real time day like mission like quest thing yeah. yeah you're supposed to go all the way over to this different continent do all these things for a bunch of these dark elves gain like notoriety within their ranks and then come over here and buy the plantation from them and then yeah. like then you can either continue the work that they're doing or you can free everyone or something like that right but I uh. took it upon myself to be like, nah. <laughs> I just <Yeah. laughs> I just got off this place and I see that there's all these people that are being forced to live in squalor. It's not even like their economic choice. So well, that's yeah. a weird that's a weird statement. Anyways. Um <laughs> So yeah, no, that's wrong. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna do justice the way that my poor my my poor just got off the boat ass can can do. Oh, that's right. The for Eldritch. So I never played. I never ended up playing Morrowind. My dad was into those. My dad played that one. I think. And I, my, maybe my brother did too. But is that how you start? So you, you start. You come out. You literally come off a boat. Yes. So, um, yeah. You're 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 not i don't know why i don't remember why you're on a boat but the game starts with an actual like cgi cutscene type of a thing where the goddess azura starts talking to you or i don't know if it's supposed to be her but her voice actor <laughs> starts to talk to you and is like trying to tell you all the like the kind of just vague backstory kind of stuff and she goes and now wake up and you kind of like and you're on this boat and this dude you know and you're there with this other dude and he goes, yeah. he goes, hey man, you look kind of roughed up, you know, rough seas and all that. You, you okay? Uh, okay? What's your name? And then you get to choose your name. And then he goes, okay, hold on, shh, shh, there's someone coming. And then the person that is owns the boat comes up to you and is like, hey, you're you're the guy, right? And you go, I guess so. And then yeah. he goes, all right, come with me. You're 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 gonna get processed. And it's like, all right, cool. And then you do all this stuff and you find out that you've basically been purchased by the by the empire to perform this blades thing contract whatever 
but you're yeah, basically yeah. free. Okay. Like you can work for them, but you're basically free. Yeah. Or, yeah, no, yeah, not yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. You should Cause... you should work for them, but you're basically free. <laughs> right. Cuz then then Oblivion started you were a prisoner, right? And you had to escape the prison. Yes. And the king I do you kill the that. king the king comes for I don't remember something, why they something. freed you. Oh, cuz the secret entrance was behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a the See, king. The king had to was going somewhere. Yeah, there were people coming to kill to kill that dude, and they were trying to get him out to like hide him somewhere. They, and they had to go. To... They had to go through your prison, or like you were in on it. Then no, they hired you no, to they do had to go through something. your prison cell, and someone was like, "Who put this? Who put this prisoner in this cell?" Like apparently, no one yeah. was supposed to put anyone. in That's this cell. right. Yeah. <laughs> And they were just like, well, I guess it can't be done. Just stay against the wall. And they just leave the secret door open for you to follow, I guess. Right. Yeah. I don't know. The The, the beginning of that story was always very weird. And I had to fill in a storyline for that one, too, which ends horribly for me in the sense that I can't play Oblivion anymore. But oh, um, yeah. I do have one more, um, one more story that in the Morrowind before I can jump to Oblivion, which is... Um, the thing that I was talking about with the um, the Eaters of the Dead, which right, um, it the 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 build up to it is kind of is kind of weird because um, I get off the boat and then I kind of go and I sell all my stuff and I buy a um, I think I buy like a stupid sword something like it's like one of the better what it's one of the better stupid swords but basically i go there and i go okay i don't know where i'm going so i'm just going to kind of walk north so you kind of start i don't remember where this port is but i remember it being so, like south ish on this Mar the continent of Morrowind island i don't remember if it's a okay but so yeah. i just started walking north and i eventually started going up into these mountains and I come to this area, and, um, you know, I, I'm talking, and I get all this, I get these, like, these vague hints of this dude who keeps the, keeps the ash, the ash zombies away via this, you know, this amazing bow thing, and I go, oh, oh okay. I like bows, that's how, that's how he started a successful revolution once upon a time, you know? <laughs> so... You know, if it's the you know, so I start talking around at this at this gate. So I come to this gate, and I start talking to all these people at this gate, and I'm like, "Hey, so who's the guy?" Yeah. And I find the guy because you know the name pops up above their heads, and I go, "Oh." So I start talking to him. He doesn't have any dialogue associated with him. He's just like, "I can tell you information about the gate, but I'm not going to tell you." You know, but he doesn't have any information about himself. He doesn't have any sort of like story triggers in his dialogue box unless you know maybe if i go somewhere else and talk to someone else then i come to him later but yeah. that's not the case because i did eventually just you know hit my shift key and i just kind of crouched a little bit and i walked up behind him pulled out my dagger i just go ha yeah. <laughs> ah. when you're when you're level so in order in order to get there right i kind of you i i'm the stubborn person that actually will hit shift or whatever the crouch button is i think it's shift and just walk to avoid all of uh, the all of the random enemies yeah. that are there well because crouch crouch helps you hide it makes you more correct. invisible right invisible, theoretically yes. yeah correct so in morrowind there's this flying and there's this flying beast called a cliff racer and the closer you get to the center of the the, the entirety of Morrowind is basically a volcano, but the closer you get to this volcano, the more cliff racers there are. And unfortunately, that's where this gate is kind of located. And so I did try to just keep walking north a couple times, and I get I kept getting swarmed and killed by cliff racers. So I just said, all right, I'm just going to hit, I'm just going to hit my crouch button. I'm just going to walk north. And I eventually did make it to the gate. In doing okay. that, though, I did pass like 20 cliff racers, and because I'm passing 20 cliff racers constantly crouching, my sneak ability just skyrockets. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so by the time I get to this gate, I'm still technically like level one or so, like in yeah. stat wise, but in sneak stat, I'm like, 
level 10 or something <laughs> so i'm standing behind this guy and like my health and my you know my mana bar or my magicka bar is just like if I if I don't crit this guy in this if I don't get that sneak crit in this thing and kill him instantly he's gonna turn around and one shot uh-huh. me so there's a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of, there's a lot at stake here so I go ah. and yes I did fail a bunch of times but we're gonna <laughs> jump forward we're gonna jump forward to the one time where I go ah. yeah okay. and I get yeah. him and I go you know that. <gasps> <laughs> so I immediately they look, at, shit. <laughs> I look at all of his stuff and his armor doesn't fit what I chose that I'm proficient in wearing so I'm like oh man well I can't really take uh, that okay. the other thing so the reason why I say that he has no real story benefit is because usually if you kill a key character this the, the bar of death comes up on your screen and says you have killed a key character and you are no longer able to progress the, the storyline yeah and Maybe for side missions it might have been okay, like actual story. Missions. Like, yeah. uh, but don't even, do that, man. <laughs> it, 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 would, it would still pop up for side for certain side line for side stories too. Oh, it okay. would just, I think it would just say you cannot complete um, a storyline or something like that with this. Oh, person sure. Dead. Okay. So. You know, because usually a lot of storylines would give you like this really cool item or something. It's like you can no longer get that item because you killed this guy and you've closed that door now. So this guy right, didn't have right, any right. of that. All he had though was the bow of Azura <laughs> or the the Azure bow, something with an A. Yeah, something something like that. In any case, it was this really awesome bow, and I'm surprised that he didn't have any sort of like storyline, you know, defenses toward me yeah. taking it. I was like, all right, cool. I got this bow that does like 50 base damage. And with my sneak yeah. attack, I basically one hit anything. Um, right. Except for the higher level demons. <laughs> but we'll talk about yeah. that later. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, sure. But then once I had that bow, so I just kind of went through and I and I no longer had to sneak. So I just started working on my archery skill by practicing on all the cliff racers that I snuck past previously. Mm, okay. <laughs> so... So basically, the, the, the story in my head so far was, you know, I get off this boat and I, you know, I, I'm just kind of wandering around and I'm just kind of a thief at this point. And then I get, I get that, I get that one little, that one little um, hint drop of, you know, oh man, did you hear that the, um, did you hear that the, the vizier has this new, has this newfangled staff and it can turn people into animals? And it's like, yeah. I know where the vizier lives. Well, at the time I didn't, but I was just like, eh, that's in- that's interesting information, but I'm just going to crouch yeah. and walk north and see what happens. What? Then if the vizier is here and he's trying to convince the sultan. What's your name? Prince Abubu. <laughs> 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 yeah, so then I go, so now suddenly I've, I've slowly developed this mission of like, I'm going to take this from that guy. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, your pickpocket when I'm gonna I, take your shit. To, when I tried to pickpocket him, the bow wasn't an, uh, an option. But if you know, but if you kill him, the bow's there. So I was like, "That's yeah. weird." Whatever. I'm glad. That, I'm oh. glad that. I'm glad the secretary told me who, who's who's the legendary <laughs> who's the legendary archer in this in this gate area. <laughs> but funny. then, basically, with the bow, I had a lot more confidence to just kind of walk around and. Um, you know, gather more sort of legend lore. So then I, 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 I went from this kind of like this lowly petty thief stealing apples and daggers to kind of try to steal larger swords and armor, to stealing this this or to murdering basically and looting this bow off of this off of this guard. Okay. Yeah. To basically a legend hunter or a, a legend hunter and treasure and <laughs> treasure seeker. Um, yeah. Because then from there, I learned that there was this, um, there was this, uh, there was this cuirass that could defend you. From are those all... the cat? Are those the cat people? No, cuirass. Never mind. <laughs> there you go. I'm thinking Khajiit. Khajiit <laughs> are the cat people. Um, there's cuirass, this cuirass yeah, yeah, yeah. that um, would pr- uh, protect you from all fire. You were immune to fire. And so far, I've probably died about five That's times good. to this little black beetle that just walks up to you, kind of, 
kind of lazily it sets it on fire explodes <laughs> yeah it just does this little dome of fire that just goes buh, <laughs> buh, <laughs> buh. and ah, i have fire! no i have no defensive against that i'm a i'm a i'm a lizard man so <laughs> I was like, that sounds amazing. Fire's like our greatest weakness. <laughs> so, you know, I just kind of go through and I just start to kind of gather lore. I didn't actually find that caress until way later. Um, oh, but, okay. Um, I remembered that the DLC for the northern expansion, um, Solstein, was installed. So I was like, oh, oh cool, okay. I have this bow, so I could, you know, I know all the enemies up there are, like, super higher level. Like, I'm supposed to be, like, level 23 or something before I go up there. But with this bow, yeah. I should be able to sneak by and just kind of destroy everything, right? So I go up there and right, I start right, to right. kind of talk around to people and I start to kind of really get into the to the storyline. Because this is the first time, I'm, like, level 8 or something, right? <laughs> like, I'm not supposed to be talking to any of these people to learn any of this information yet. But I was like, but just in talking to the first guard that was just like, you want to get on this boat and go over there to like the cold area? Like why? Um, just yeah. in talking to him, I was like, I really want to go over there. Um, uh. So I ended up going over there and I, I was really glad that back then they didn't have the, um, the, I don't know if it was a technological kind of inhibitor, but, um, they didn't have things like, it's really cold over here. You're going to slowly take damage until you put on something warmer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, started walking through, and that bow came in really handy because, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things over there that will just kind of one-shot you, and they didn't look like they could one-shot you. Yeah. Uh, one of the scariest things, though, are the little these little goblin things that ride these boars because... Mm -hmm. Their 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 sound their the sound that they make is like the the craziest thing ever. They're fast and they do a lot of damage even to a properly leveled character. They do a lot of damage, so okay. they scare me. But with a bow, yeah, <laughs> just kind of they just go. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, um, and then you know I just sort of snuck my way around and made my way up to a secondary village. So you're, you know, you're dropped off at this kind of castle keep area where these Imperials are trying to be like, you know, oh, we're just trying to figure out what this, what this area is about. And I'm just yeah. trying to like, all right, I mean, that's cool. You guys do what you want to do. You're Imperial though, so I don't really care about what you're doing. So I'm going to do what I'm going to uh -huh. do. Right. And I keep here like, and the writers for Morrowind kept doing what they do best. And it's just kind of dropping really subtle hints and like, very you know mundane sentences every once in a while so i was like all right I'm yeah gonna, i'm gonna keep going towards this thing sorry going through this and then um found a stump <laughs> that had a sword <laughs> had a sword and a ring in it the ring let me go invisible for like an x amount of time and a sword that paralyzed people and poisoned them at the same time so <laughs> i was like yeah all right. I mean, that's really going to help me. So now I've got this long distance, you know, I've got this long distance security weapon and I've got the short, the short panic weapon or the, it's a normal size sword, but it's a close range panic weapon of like, ah, stay there for a minute. <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of run yeah, away yeah. a little bit. Um, but funny. then I slowly kind of fell into this sort of like, there's a beat, you know, um, our you know our lands are kind of in turmoil right now and we need you to kind of go through this um, you know we need to go through this ritual and you slowly kind of find out oh you guys are being plagued by <laughs> this god that's coming back and releasing werewolves <laughs> into the area right so it was just it was just one storyline after another and the only thing that was driving it was the the my imagination of I'm this I'm this legend, you know, I'm this legends hunt, you know, I'm this seeker of legends that, you know, goes out there and sees like what's going on over here. And then I end up with all these treasures and this is like, am, am, am I a tomb raider now? I haven't been in a single <laughs> yeah. crypt yet. Does this count? Right. <laughs> um, but so then there's, um, so the last thing I'm going to do before I'm going to throw it over to kind of a little little break for my for my throat is an oblivion. 
Um, mm. They had, uh, let me see, how did this one start? Because I only really know the middle and the end. Because <laughs> mm. um, I, I get a lot of what the Mage's Guild had to do mixed up with Skyrim's Mage Guild stuff. Um, so I believe in Oblivion, the way that it started was I wanted to... I was just doing the normal quest thing, so I wasn't really doing what our show topic is supposed is supposed to be about. But you know, I was just kind of following <laughs> through and just getting kind of enamored in the writing of what was going on. But right. then there's right. kind of this this like educational gap, <laughs> you know, like you you're done doing all these yes. kind of menial tasks for all these other um, all these other mages within the guild, and then suddenly there's this kind of. Um, you know, there's this learning gap where you can do some other side stuff or you can, like, go and, like, finish this one final challenge and talk to, like, the head honcho or something. Um, right. And in that point, I don't remember why I wanted to do it, but I wanted to make an inv a, a chameleon spell because also must have been something to do with the spell because they discontinued chameleon as a spell after oblivion mm -hmm. <laughs> but um yeah. i was i was determined to make a chameleon spell that would last um for like four seconds it wouldn't need to be long because i just wanted to get up close enough to you know assassinate someone and just get that you know that in that immediate sneak bonus crit yeah yeah so it would only last like four seconds but it would for a hundred percent i would cease to exist yeah um because hey, keep talking i'm gonna grab my water but i can see keep talking because whereas for um in in invisibility you know the, the the moment that you open a door it just it vanishes so you can't really like put it on in the, in the room on the side and then open yeah it, you know and then ghost your way into the door and then you know and then stab them you would have to go in they'd see you and go ah intruder and then you go invisible and then they go there is a person in here where is the person in here he so... must be gone i'll <laughs> resume writing my back turn to the door so and also at this at this time in my in my age i had rewatched an old uh, by that time it would be an old film um uh Batman, the Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, so good. That is an amazing film. <laughs> that, least... That's one of the best Batman movies. <laughs> that was one of my favorite non-villains? What do they call that when it's like, this is the main, like, when they, for the majority of the movie, oh. like, this is the main movie, and then they find out that uh, it's not really the main villain, but they're still kind of doing bad things. What is that kind well, of the phantasm, the phantasm is is the villain. It's the antagonist. It... I would argue differently. From for for, for the well, beginning, for the beginning the whole of the time, film, Batman's Batman's chasing this phantasm, um, right? And but... then the Joker comes in because the Joker always comes in, <laughs> right? But like the so they do they do establish they do create the premise that this the it's batman versus this phantom person but then yeah. it slowly turns into this um you know it slowly kind of turns over into this batman plus phantasm versus joker and then it kind of flips again at the very end into this like your your me your the means to your end are kind of they don't align with the rules that I've established as Batman, so therefore you're just as bad as Joker. So I need you to stop what you're doing, <laughs> type of a thing. But I never really got the the impression that she was like an actual villain, you know? She's <sighs> oh, spoiler alert! By the way, the Phantasm's a female. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's not a. She's the. Yeah, maybe not. She's an antagonist, but maybe not a villain. Yeah. Because it's she, the the phantasm does what Batman does, but kills. Yeah, she actually um, ends people. But 
such a cool character co design and i wanted to emulate that in oblivion <laughs> very cool so yeah so i so i went and i started to do uh like i i could i could make the it would be a dumb movie i think but it was like this whole like how how Peter Parker made made the web fluid type stuff, right? I sat down and I actually studied. Like in the game, I was just like, "All right, I'm gonna pick up this flower and I'm gonna study what it does, you know, and I'm gonna boost my and I'm gonna go outside after I've you know after I've done all this stuff, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna actually practice my illusion skills to get it up to a hundred percent, and I'm gonna do all this stuff, you know, get my enchantment up so I can be better at the at the spell crafting table." And uh, it was, it it was probably like if I if I stand back and I look at myself looking at that, I'd, I'd just be like, man, that is just the saddest thing. But in that in that moment at that time, it felt really cool because I was actually in the game. Like it was it was everything as a student that I was experiencing in real life hap happening within a video game, but within the span of like. Uh, 12 minutes you know it was just like yeah it, it was so satisfying too because everything was it, everything just kind of everything just kind of flowed you know like I, I would go out and i would do all this other kind of research to help boost boost one stat and then i would spend some time and just like all right i'm gonna just i'm just you know i'm just gonna create this this illusionary duplicate like for three hours until my mana yeah. runs dry and then i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna do this other thing and build up this thing and then finally, and in in-game time, you know, because I had to speed up time in order to refill my mana, it took about maybe like 13 days or something in order to be like, it was finally just like, oh, oh gosh, you know. Oh, that's why it really it really appear, uh, appealed to my um, childhood aesthetics is because it was a lot like when you see a... Um, an anime character or something do like a training montage to like go up to like a tournament oh, or something yeah. you know it's just like all right i'm gonna do all this stuff and then by the end you're just like ah, ah, i did it did it <laughs> um <laughs> yeah but yeah so the so then i you know i finally went out gathered all you know gathered all my materials i had my soul stone and i had i had my I had I knew everything. I had my spell. I had my soul stone. I had my money. I had all these things. I go up to the spell casting table, sit down. And I go okay. Soul stone. I brings up the menu thing. I go. I select chame um, chameleon and I boost it all the way to a hundred percent. And I only move the thing over to like to like five percent. Uh, to and I go okay. So maybe let's do like five seconds. Five seconds is actually quite a long time. And long time, it, the yeah. game just won't let me like process that it's just like no the, the, you don't have enough material for that or your spell casting is not high enough i'm like what do you mean it's not high enough it's 100 percent. Uh, can't go any higher than that <laughs> so i was like all right fine let's go back to the original thing i got a little too overzealous three seconds it's like okay you can do it yes uh, submit it i wonder yeah. if you had to be a you, you had to be a certain level or something maybe yeah, I don't know. Like overall it was, level, because it know. wasn't right. Because it wasn't. Um, I, I, Oblivion didn't have the percentage thing. It was. Um, it was levels. So it was. Illusion right. was level yeah. one hundred. Um, there yeah. might have been an item or something that could have put it over, but usually um, Bethesda doesn't like those kind of things into their game because. Yeah. It programs generally whenever there's a thing that's like you have a hundred percent of this thing and that's the max level and then they have an item that says oh but I can add thirty to that and makes it go over that that usually makes bugs <laughs> in the game. Sure. Yeah. Um, unless they specifically code it to allow it to do that. But um, anyways, the um, yeah maybe there's a ma maybe there's items that to have max where you actually get max. But I think then I it did. Just, it only goes up to hundred. Yeah, I think I did try to research that, and I don't think there were any things that was like, "Oh, it'll boost your illusion by one level." I think yeah. it was like you can get more XP, but that's neither here nor there. Um, huh. The uh, so you know, hit submit, and it goes, Whoa, and it goes. I have this new little spell in my in my inventory. And I go. Yeah. I'm so excited. And in my training, I know that there's this 
there's this cave nearby that has this wraith that just kind of guards the entrance and there's this troll that comes out and goes back in and I know there's other stuff in there I just don't know what's in there because I've died in there before and I heard other things roar <laughs> roar down the line yeah so yeah. I was like I know the perfect <clears throat> place to do this I got I got three seconds I can I can gut that I can gut that wraith skin that skin that troll and then you know find out whatever else is down there and I can probably recast it because it does cost a lot but I do have a lot of mana potions so yeah let's do this thing right yeah so I go up there and hunker down the wraith's not there for some reason I'm just like I don't like this this is weird maybe it's like <laughs> in the tunnel somewhere so I go okay so I walk up don't I get to the this. I get to the mouth of the tunnel there's still nobody around and I go okay, yeah, and I yeah. and I disappear. And so usually in back in Oblivion, when you cast Chameleon, you get this kind of like translucent. Like you can you can still kind of see yourself because you're not fully invisible. The whole point of Chameleon is that you just kind of predator into the background, so you're still <laughs> generally visible, you but you're you still get that telltale shimmer. <laughs> yeah, but um. <laughs> my chameleon is a hundred percent. So when I did it, my my you know my character model just vanished. I ceased to exist yeah. on my screen, and I was like, yes. <laughs> Down in the I top, did it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I was just marveling at this, and I hear I hear in the distance, <laughs> and I go, what the <laughs> hell? Like a bat out of hell, this troll just comes, ba 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 ba. And mm -hmm. smacks me. And I sit there and I go, what? what? Like, I'm just like looking at my like open chest and I'm just like, what? What's going on? He mm -hmm. hits me again. The wraith comes up and goes, rah. You know, you know, I, I, in all the training, I've actually like gotten some better armor and stuff. So these guys are like smacking me. I'm like, what the hell? I'm running. I decide to run into the cave because maybe I can go and I can cast mm -hmm. and hide behind a corner or something. Yeah. And so I go, I go down there, and you know, because three seconds are up by this, by the time he hits me twice, and I go, oh, I gotta run. So I run into the cave, go duck around a corner, and I cast it, and I hear the troll and the wraith that are that I left up on the surface, and they're they're coming closer to me now, and I hear about five other creatures further in the cave. So somehow, instead of creating this chameleon spell that makes me disappear from from existence. I instead created a thing that made me invisible, but let everybody else see where I was. <laughs> so somehow uh -huh. I managed to create a spell that did the opposite effect. And I felt Weird. so betrayed by, by the games, by the games, like uh, programming that I just can't bring myself to play Oblivion anymore. <laughs> yeah. And it's really sad because I actually did like a lot of aspects within that game, but I, just... I played I played Oblivion for a long time, but <sighs> I, yeah. I think what ruined Oblivion for me was we found like a spawning hack sort of thing where like you do do these there's a specific steps. And then uh, something to get. Basically, you could you could copy anything you want based off of how many arrows you had or something. Huh. So then it made it. It was basically it was a cheat code, but it made the game too easy. And and that process took a long time. Um, it was kind of like it reminded me of the uh, what was the rare candy trick in the first Pokemon? Uh, like there was a yeah. way for you in like red. infinite rare candies, but it it took. You had to go from from here and then fly specifically to here and then and then uh, swim at this certain angle, and if you did it, you, it's just a spawning of rare candy. Uh, anyways, the this trick that we had it it made it too easy, and then I got like I just got bored because then all I was doing instead of grinding to get better, I was grinding to get more rich so I could just buy stuff. <laughs> Uh, I just made it. I just got bored. But uh, I mean, I, I like the Elder Scrolls games and even Skyrim. Skyrim, I probably want to give another crack at. Uh, I don't know. Part of it is kind of like what you said at the very beginning. There's just so much stuff to do. 
And I made a joke where I was like, can you just tell me where to go? <laughs> like a little bit, like when it's completely open, that's, it's too much. Skyrim, it's a video game. Tell Skyrim me where I'm supposed to is a little more, um, is a little linear. more of an offender when it comes to like, tell me where to go. Cause Morrowind and Oblivion, they, from the onset of whenever you get agency of your character, you do have this like you should go here and talk to this person but well, i mean there's 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 the the story quest which does tell you where to go but right but because... i mean um so i don't think you actually got that in skyrim until you talk to until you just randomly walk down to this little nordic village and there's a guy there that's just like hey like you should you know there's, there's well it's a lot, the very a first weird stuff it... happening at this crypt up there you should you know you could probably go up there but you might die yeah. <laughs> um, but in Oblivion and Morrowind, it was more like you get off, you, you get out from wherever you're being held, and then you're immediately told, hey, there's some bad stuff happening. You should go to this town and talk to this specific person. And then that person yeah. usually says, all right, I have a job for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Whereas okay. In, whereas in Skyrim, you know, at least in my memory, you 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 survive the the burning of this village and then you're just kind of out in this field oh no that's right yeah. whoever you whichever door you choose there is a dude that's like hey i'm going to my village you want to follow me and then you can follow him now i remember uh, okay but that's yeah in that's so yeah but that's so that that's a lot more that's a lot more um uh optional in my mind you know it's like it's like right. this guy's there right. he's running to his village and yeah you could follow him but I mean, there's no real like. <laughs> what are you that desperate for a reason to that you're gonna, gonna, yeah. gonna follow this guy? Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I feel like the like in your experience, I have I have a mental state where I could I could probably be okay with that and just not do you know I could be aware that that's that's an option and just not do it and just play through Oblivion, but I played yeah. I played by Oblivion's rules. And I got to a point where I said, and you "All right, got punished for let it. me yeah. be, yeah, let me be awesome." And it said, "All right, you're awesome at attracting everything to you." All right, you're awesome. <laughs> Fuck you. Have fun. <laughs> oh, that was that was that that hurt that hurt my soul when I when that happened. Yeah. Like, I, I, st I the only reason why the like why that why that um, troll hit me twice is because I literally just sat there just. What? What's going on? And why are they able to what, see me? What's happening? Which, I believe that's also been depicted in multiple books and, f like, w I remember it happening in one film where one guy had like this, like, um, this like mulligan sort of like spell or like cloak or something where he was like, I'm gonna go invisible, get stabbed anyway, and he's just like, w w how? Uh -huh. And it falls dead. Yeah. <laughs> And and now his body's invisible, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but that's the only thing that's keeping you from loading up Skyrim again is just the the intimidation of all the storylines that you can you can go to. Uh, I guess I I mean it's, I'm not intimidated by it necessarily, but it's, it's also it's just it's what a, it's a big game, and I kind of was already doing. There. Which is a huge game, so I have to get back to playing. <laughs> but uh, no, I definitely I want to play Skyrim. I just haven't. I just never got around to it. I think it's so, more it's more that it's it's a it's in a big investment time. Yeah. Uh, so as far as this show topic goes, it is a little off topic. But as far as Skyrim goes, while I'm going through the the chronological order of of Elder Scrolls games, yeah. Um, <laughs> There, there was a thing that did rub me wrong in Skyrim, and it was the coolest storyline that I think exists within that game. Because it's this side quest, completely optional, totally irrelevant to the whole other game. And it doesn't have to do with... Um, I, Oh my god, I can't remember his name anymore. The god of chaos and trickery? Loki? No, within the Elder Scrolls system. Oh. He likes wheels of cheese for some reason. And um, 
<laughs> I really liked him, and I can't remember because I haven't played an Elder Scrolls game in forever. <laughs> God, no. Anyways, and it actually didn't have to do with him. It had to do with a different Daedric Prince. And I was totally like, who is this person? I thought I was going to be dealing with this other god. Um, but it's really cool because it starts off very indeed. It starts off very D and D like, blah, blah, blah. um, in which you go into yeah. this tavern and there's a guy sitting there and he's just like, Hey, you think you could beat me at a drinking game? And you're just like, what the hell? What, what game am I playing? I'm supposed to be like sword and sorcering things. And this is the first challenge I've ever seen where I could drink someone with someone. All right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's sit down. All right, yeah, sure. So you drink one, I drink one. All right, all right. You drink one, I drink one. All right. And then eventually, after like maybe three or something, you black out. Um, very similar to a game over, and I kind of freaked out a little bit. I was like, well, I just, I got bamboozled. It was abandoned. I got <laughs> drunk under the table. Um, but you wake up, not in the tavern. Uh, you wake up in like a field somewhere, I think, and turns out that you had a very um, hangoverish esque type escapade with this with this Daedric prince, in which you go through and you messed up almost an entire village. You ruined the uh -huh. wedding. You did all this other stuff uh -huh. over the course of like a night, and you have to go through and kind of like pick the pieces back together, and. Um, by picking the pieces back together, you also kind of like mend the problems that you solved. Uh, and, you know, and so by the time you're done, you get this cool Daedric um, staff that lets you summon an elemental. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a well-known bug, or at least at the time it was well-known, that there is like a 13% chance, I think, that your game would not allow you to up your um, summoning ability. So if you if you train in summoning, eventually you get to a point where you can summon two elementals just without yeah. any other help. It's just you. Buddy, yeah. <laughs> fight. Um, yeah. But with this item, because it's an item, you can technically summon a third elemental. <laughs> And that was such a cool oh, that was okay. such a cool concept for me because I was like, oh my god! So I can have, I can have the fire elemental for range. I can have a storm elemental just for brute strength, and then I can summon yeah. like a like a second fire elemental for like another like artillery person. Like that sounds amazing. Then that I can just cool. like I can just cast that into a room of necromancers and then close the door and just be like, have fun, you guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the game doesn't allow you to do that. I don't know if they patched that or if they just if the developers just didn't want you to do that, but um, right. the game doesn't allow you to do that. So if mm. you try, if you summon your if you summon your two things and then try to do the Daedric thing, or if you try to do the Daedric thing and summon your two things, it will either, um, depending on which way you do it, you it will either dispel your your um, staff summon demon in order to summon mm -hmm. your two guys, or it will just not let your um, staff summon a demon. In either case, the fallout of that is if you try to do that and your staff fails, um, there's a there's a percentage of chance that your staff will just never work. <laughs> so you just have this staff. Oh, okay. And it's it it's sad. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> yeah, but that was probably the coolest. Um, side story that I've ever seen written and then executed yeah. in the, in the um, game. Yeah. Yeah! So, um, that is cool. our hour, um, unless you want to... Shiogorath! Wait, no. There yes, Shiogorath. That's his name. Yeah. Um, so, that is our hour. I mean, I... I... Yeah, I didn't really have a good one of a story that I had to fill in. The closest I could think of was I have two examples. There's from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, first one, and then from uh, the 
WWF SmackDown on PlayStation One. Uh, that's probably the. I mean, the for for Pro Skater because there wasn't really a story so much. You go to these different places and you got to collect the stuff. And then you do competitions. So mine was just like. No, I couldn't really because it was because I was playing as Tony Hawk, so I couldn't. Either way, so the better one is is uh, Smack. I had to, I made a create a character and you do the campaign. But the campaign there was sort of story like they went through the annual events, so it was you, like sorry, oh, this, this again. SmackDown, WWF SmackDown, the pro wrestling game. Got it. Um, so it would go through the year, and it would be like. You're on Raw. You're on SmackDown. Now it's oh, it's a pay per view. This is WrestleMania. Ah. But it was kind of that was kind of it. That was the story, quote unquote. Um, or you come up to the Royal Rumble, you know, the big events. But my I made a creative character, and uh, he had the um, pants of X Pac. Uh, let me see if I can find them. I can put it up on. I can put it up on stream if you send it to me in Discord. Yeah. Yeah, Xbox. Uh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. But you saying um, pro the pro skater games actually did remind me of a um of a road trip story that me and um, my friend actually kind of vicariously lived through this <laughs> this video game. So when you're done, yeah. when you're done, I got another one. Yeah, he had the pants of X Pac. He had big shows. Oh, nice. Well, chest. This is this is the weird thing about being the about being the on the producer side is that I have to sit here and think. Well, X Pac a relatively well-known name so do i bother putting this up there because people who know should know and people who don't know probably don't care <laughs> no yeah just show the just show the pants so i had those pants essentially big show's chest he was just big yeah, you won't have to show that but he was just big big hairy chest and then kane's oh, mask <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna actually put up an image as a separate thing but i forgot that it pulls it up as a thing all right so yeah and then Kane's mask, like his original mask. So it was this big seven foot guy, real, real big, had long hair like that. And then um, <laughs> I, because it was PlayStation, so I was, what, I think fourth, maybe fifth grade. I wasn't great at following directions or understanding things quite. <laughs> so when I went to, I went to give him a name. I forget what name I tried to give it, but apparently I didn't press enter, so it just went with default. <laughs> <laughs> so my character's my character's name was default, and at first like, oh, I can't change it. This is kind of... wait default. I actually kind of like that, <laughs> and I think I came out to. I think my entrance was either the rocks or stone colds, or maybe if I may have just been. Um, and I was billed from parts unknown. <laughs> so, uh, from car parts unknown, default. <laughs> um, and the story, I, I the story that I created with just, um, you know, it's it's the story of this underdog who came in, and I ended up uh, uh, winning every single belt. <laughs> All at once. Nice. <laughs> you're like, so you're like the U.S. Wrestling champion, <laughs> Intercontinental. You're like the wrestling yeah. version of Little Mac. <clears throat> yeah, but this was way back when it was still. I think they had, they hadn't bought WCW yet, but they still had a lot of. So there was U.S. Intercontinental, the tag teams, world, the world heavyweight champion, the European champion, and the hardcore champion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which is the one where they could, they could, you can uh, go for it. At, at, you just have, if someone has a ref, they can attack you and try to get like falls count anywhere. But uh, yeah, my story was just that, you know, this guy from Parts Unknown who didn't even have a name 
ended up being the greatest champion of all time. <laughs> nice. That's a cool. But, hey, you know, it was I mean, like a, that's kind of nice. It's a good. It's a good story. People can root for. Yeah. Um, like Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> but, what. Um. <clears throat> oh God, I got I got apple skin stuck in like my like this area of my throat. <laughs> oh yeah, I hate that. <laughs> um. Your your mentioning of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater reminded me of a really fun, well, vicariously fun summer that uh, we all had. That was a combination of real real life events and that and one of the versions of that video game. Uh, there was there was one and one iteration of that game in which it would give you like in between in between competitions or whatever skating challenges you had. I think it was mostly street, though, so I don't know. Uh, in between skating challenges, anyway, you could go over and also take on these alternative kind of challenges in which you would have to go and collect, like, um, you'd have to go and collect these coins or something from, you know, by jumping down this ramp and going up this thing, but you were on a lawnmower. Or you had to drive, you know, you had to drive a car and try to, try to, you know, get yeah. on top of get on top of the building. Um, just all these non um, skateboard related sort of challenges, but they still kind of fell into the same um, design concept that was within this skating game. So you still had to go off ramps and stuff with this lawnmower and all this other yeah. stuff. Uh, so. Yeah. What we ended up doing was the with it we didn't or at least I didn't really give a crap about what was going on within the the storyline of the game, but what my storyline was was because my friend would take over for all the all the skateboarding things because he was really good at the um you know uh, the, the actual, the actual doing the, stuff, yeah, yeah the actual doing the tricks and you know maintaining balance <laughs> for the grinds and stuff like that because he you know he knew what he was doing and then I would take over for all the shenanigans when. You know, when when the lawnmower came into thing, it was like, "All right, Tyler, here you go." I was like, "Yeah." So yeah. <laughs> so it became this. It became this very kind of um, jackass esque kind of road trip across this virtual kind of plane, <laughs> in which you know he would get us all the all the money and stuff, and I would get us all the publicity by doing all these like weird other things. And so you know to together within this virtual world we were kind of like you know we were just like this i guess what would be like the dream youtube job today <laughs> where it was just like yeah look at this look at this dude doing all these amazing tricks and then is he gonna jump off that building on a lawnmower <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah just you know went through the game and finished it that way god i can't remember what game that was it was so it was so much fun to think of just like a you know a cross country road trip in that sort of manner though where it was just like um you know where it's just like at one point in the day it was just like you know oh yeah you know all these road all these all these um he does all these tricks and gets all this you know gets the prize money from all <coughs> these, you know, um all these street kids and then you know the the gangster guy comes up and goes like, hey that's our money. You can't just take it from yeah. us like that. It's like, uh oh, everyone on the lawnmower. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, and then that sort of translated into the real world because you know we didn't finish that. We didn't finish that game in just you know one day. So um, back right. then he was. Um, the dream was to try to get like a. Um, I think the dream was there was always the there was always the talk of getting scouted by an actual like skateboard um, company and stuff like that and get sponsored in the game, right? No, in real life. So I would, oh, so wow. I would accompany yeah, so I would accompany him to like skate parks. So we'd go out to El Dorado and stuff, and you know he would oh, skate right. around oh, out okay. there. And I, I mean, I, I didn't really mean to, but I saw myself just starting to just kind of do the things that I did in that video game in which I would take other stuff and just kind of do stuff on the perimeter of, <laughs> of the skate park. <laughs> so eventually though, like my, my knees started to use, my knees started to hurt. And so I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on some rollerblades. I don't like start. this. My I'm knee gonna hurts. <laughs> I'm going to start joining. I'm going to start joining him in the, you know, in the, in the skate rink and oh, okay. the park. Yeah. Uh, 
but it was just but it was funny though because um i would do all of my shenanigans in the transition between whichever house we were at mine or his to the skate park because you know it's el dorado where you mm. know in, like belmont heights long beach <laughs> yeah, and yeah yeah being 11 11 to 14 you know we didn't we, we can't drive <laughs> can't drive yeah. and we don't exactly yeah. have an income so we don't have like a reliable method of taking the bus um, you just I had mean, to skate there <laughs> yeah so we just had to find alternative ways to get there and so i well, got where, to... where did, did did you live closer to el dorado at the time like because i know your parents but that's a good that's a long ways away <laughs> it is we <laughs> to were, el dorado we were we were very um determined so um in, in my so yeah in my childhood circles whenever we saw um a depiction of some sort of cross-country sort of trek um it it's played like, to all oh, of our aesthetics cool. because we were just like right. yeah that's that's us that's us in a modern day you know or that's us that's in what a, we already that's do us in a fantasy day yeah so is the, is the house which you're at have, have you guys been there your whole life or for the most part much. um i oh, mean okay. they they my parents used to live in Sacramento. I think it was Sacramento, something with an S, for a while, and then they moved here. Oh, okay. So I lived. I but, lived somewhere but you... else. Yeah, I lived. I lived somewhere else for like three years, and then came over here for the rest of my life until I had agency to take a plane. So you're <laughs> of your conscious of your conscious like self aware. That yeah, correct. Okay. Um, yeah. but to that's compound... the, that's the that's where you grew, that's where you grew up. Like that's yeah yeah. Uh, to it. compound okay. on the El Dorado trek though, so that's a pretty long that's a pretty long trek. But to compound on that, uh, my friend moved from the this south South Long Beach downtown sort of area up mm. to North Long Beach um, mm. on like Cherry and I don't I don't think it's Willow. Way even or, further, even yeah, even further way away. Up there. <laughs> and. Um, there was a long time in which we didn't know that there was a bus that just went straight from um, <laughs> seventh, seventh and Cherry all the way up to basically where where they lived. But there's so, a bus stop at El Dorado Park too. <laughs> damn it! <laughs> um, <laughs> Did you not know? I think there's like three. I think there's one near the near where the skate because there's like three just. Dis- Really, two halves. Look, okay. If there's no. anything that I want to impart upon the yeah. kids of today is that you are oh, right. fit little demons, and if we did it back <laughs> in our day, you could do it. I mean, shit, I could, I could probably do those same treks now. I might yeah. be a little more winded, but I could probably do it. <laughs> my knees hurt. <laughs> my, my knees hurt. Back is broken. <laughs> My neck, my back, my <laughs> pussy, my crack. <laughs> ah! I was trying to go. I don't think it. that's I, what the song was, is about. I was trying to, I was trying to more ad lib the um, Eminem thing, but then I couldn't follow it up with like some kind of hospital things for to fill in mom's spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So that was probably that was probably the the most positive experience that i've had with a skateboard game in my opinion because um in my in my in my stance i have a very short attention span for for those for those kind of games um but if what is that just sports sports games in general yeah Yeah. kind of so i don't i don't understand the draw to the football the soccer I actually did kind of get into the whole Mario tennis thing, but that's because Mario like fills in the Mario. boring gaps. Yeah, it's a it's in our and that's very it's not realistic. All right, tending to yeah, no Mario Mario kind of takes it into that fantasy area that I can I can dig. Well, even I like I I totally I really genuinely want to play uh, the uh, uh, Mario and Sonic Olympics, but I don't think I don't want to play a a realistic olympic that sounds boring <laughs> but mario versus sonic hell yeah <laughs> I, I could see that um but yeah the yeah. um the fact that they that that one and i can't remember the title of it but the fact that that one game had all these other elements in it that i could i could lose myself in and i could i think it was <laughs> um underground 
no, that no, no. That sounds no. really. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Though. Tony uh, Hawk's Pro Skater Underground. Underground. That sounds really familiar. But um, the fact that and it made it even better that I could that I could pass it off to um to my yeah. friend to do all the other you know to all, do all the things that all the aspects that he liked, and um. You know, and then it f it really felt like we were that we were on kind of like this road trip kind of thing. You know, like promoting all these, um, doing all these promotions and doing all you know, and just kind of getting money while we yeah. go from like New York all the way out to California type of a thing. Yeah, Underground and Underground Two were. I love. I mean, I I love the pro skater games. Like one through four are. Um, is there especially like one and two? Those are one or two of the only like actual video games where I feel like I am confident enough. Now, granted, I've never actually done anything. Like, I feel like I could do, enter a competition and do pretty... Like, of any game, I feel like I, I'm actually pretty good at, at that one. Oh, uh, okay. I thought you were going to be like, I can enter in any skating competition and <laughs> do... No, 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 no. Okay. no. <laughs> I was like, really? Oh, yeah, just never... just um, Pro Skater 1 and 2. All right. Uh, but but underground one underground and under came out. I think when did they come out? Uh, it was. I think I was in middle school, or high school, two thousand three. So I was like eighth grade. So this was, was perfect. Was there a version of these that was on the PlayStation Two? It was PlayStation. It was one hundred percent PlayStation. Yeah, it was PlayStation Two. Okay, because the the image that you put uh, up there is for GameCube, and I was like, I could see it being well, like, yeah, but, but it's <laughs> I but it's the same, it's the same, uh, it's the same, like image. Yeah. They just, so I'm yeah. actually, yeah. So it was a good thing that you mentioned your your uh, pro Tony Hawk Pro Skater background story type stuff, because yeah, it was it's been a long time since I had that memory, and that's a that's a really that's a really fun memory to have. The, yeah, the, those the, were great the, games. The, the one and two, the Tony Hawk's Underground one. Yeah, but I think two. I think two. There was a lot more jackass guys in it, but the story was really good. Uh, or maybe it was there was maybe it was one. I might, I, might, I might have it flipped. Yeah, yeah, I might have it flipped. I don't know. Those games were fun, and it was the those are the first ones where you could. Uh, get off your board and walk around because it was the kind of thing. Whereas the original the original Pro Skaters is just like, no, you're on your board. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're on your board. Like, that's why, yeah. But, no, those are great. Yeah. Uh, and with that, I've run out of um, story bullet points that have been brought up yeah. that I had to fill in. Um Mm -hmm. So let's close it out with any closing remarks. Uh, Andrew, do you have anything else that you want to bring attention to? Uh, well, I'm getting back into doing uh, Let's Play. on. Um, I'll give you the link or whatever. But It's called uh, Bad at Video Games. And uh, Tyler, you'll, you'll be on it. We're going to record some episodes. But it's, uh, yeah, it's just uh, Let's Play. But it's, you know, we talk, we're just bad at it. <laughs> but go to uh, Smart One Productions on YouTube. Uh, I think the plan is for me to do, um, I think we'll do new episodes on Monday, Fridays. For a while, Mondays will be long-term episodes and Fridays be, uh, uh, um, do you like have, do you have an Instagram handle that people or Twitter or anything like that that people can get updates from? Yeah, go to. I think it's just Smart One Productions. Hold on. Yeah, it's just Smart One Productions, all one. Including the productions? Yes. Smart One Productions. It's not capitalized or anything, so it's easy. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, but uh, yeah, new episodes Mondays and Fridays. I think I think uh, Twitter's the same too. I, I'll mostly it'll mostly be. Instagram. I don't I don't I'm not sure if I'll do Twitter very much. <laughs> but, 
but uh, that's also we got some skits and stuff on there. It's kind. Of, I'm not sure if I want to start a whole new channel, but maybe. Yeah, that's the problem that probably I've, not. That's it's... the problem that I'm dealing with like right now is because um, one of the main things that I that I keep getting um, repeated at me, or just when I do research and then I keep hearing it repeated um, over and over again, is um, um, creating like a brand. So yeah. if you so if on Twitch, you know, if I'm, you know, if you're, if you're Stephen Seven there, right, and then you want to also be, if you want to also um, saturate yourself among the other social medias, then you should still be, you know, Stephen Seven, Stephen Seven, Stephen Seven. You should be consistent at least. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem that I'm dealing with right now is sort of a virtual existential crisis in the sense that I created my YouTube channel before I did any of this other stuff and so it's one thing and then the the Twitch channel was a byproduct of something different and then oh, I'm only now trying to <laughs> link them and it's really depressing because the YouTube channel's got a bunch of followers the Twitch channel's got a bunch of followers and I can't really like uh, change the names for the, or create a new channel so that you know I don't, I don't know I don't know what to do like I'm I need like a I need like a virtual consultant to be like all right Here's what you here's here's the best here's the best path of what you can do. You can't you can't change your Twitch name. I can, but it's um it's more or less a byproduct of the names that I choose within the games. Plus um level. Oh three. okay. Yeah. So you're you're you when you create a character, you star or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so that could still be, like, I'm Braveheart. That could still be your personality on the channel, even if it's level seven, right? Level yeah, three. I, sorry, I, where did I, I get? Yeah, where the hell I did have, I get seven? <laughs> I have. This could be the level three Twitch channel star. Yeah, um, I have a bunch of different. Like in Smart One, in Smart One Productions, I'm Brave. But yeah, in a lot I of places, I'm Brave. Different options that I could take, but. Um, I just need to sit down and hopefully find a other person to bounce <laughs> ideas off of to figure out yeah. which options what's, are most efficient. Right. What's good for you is it, it seems like everything you're doing is still video-edited. I'm trying to do a whole bunch of different things. It's like Smart One Productions is where I was putting my short stuff. But then that's also where we had our podcast before. Um, and I think I'm going to do... Uh, I want to do another podcast and just call it "We're Bad at Bad at This." So then we have "Bad at Video Games" and "Bad at This." Um, but then "Smart One" could also be—I don't know. I know the the beer. When I get back to the beer cast, that'll be that's going to be a separate thing, which is fine. And then there's my personal channel, which I have not updated in a long time. I don't know. All right, so I think yours is a little more straightforward. You're just doing right now. You're just doing games. So, but the, the consolidated up. version is on your end. Um, we are bad at video games. is is kicking off. You can get updates on Instagram at Smart One Productions, and you can check it yeah. out on Smart One Productions via YouTube. Um, is yep, it? Yep, yep. it um, are they? Um, what is it called? Affiliates or whatever? Yet, where they actually have like a st like an actual link instead of a bunch of gar like garbled letters and numbers. Oh no, I don't have nearly enough people watching to be important enough to have that. <laughs> didn't um didn't Tommy get on any of that? <laughs> I'm sure Tommy Tommy might. I thought he had enough clout to boost that YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really post on his channel so much. Well, in any case, for the for upcoming on this channel um, Monday, so I'm going to I'm gonna try to start doing more of a scheduled thing. So on Mondays, um, I'm going to jump into Blender and we're going to try to make stuff because I really like the alliteration yeah. of we're going to make stuff Mondays. And, oh, um, that is nice. <laughs> and then... Make Mondays. And then Tuesdays, so again, you know, I'm on this alliteration kick because it's really boring out here in space. <laughs> and... Um, Wait, I need to stop you. I just... I should have read this before. You have the Neverhood, and you can play the Neverhood. Yes. <laughs> can we please play that? That's one of my favorite games of all. It's yeah. side note. Actually, let me let 
let me retract that. That's my fav. That's probably my favorite video game soundtrack of all time. Yeah, I've, I've beaten it once. Once upon a time, so I can, I can oh, tour. I can, I can tour guide us through that thing. Yeah. Wait. How did you know about? Did that? you do it like on a stream or something? Or yeah, yeah, I beat it here for a group of like three people. Uh, when was the last okay. time I played that on here? How did you know about that? <laughs> um. Uh, no, I'm looking at it. It's it's in your description. Welcome, welcome. I started streaming team. Oh, right, right, right. And it says the narrative. I haven't seen that description in a long time. So in any case, on Tuesdays... I got you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so on Tuesdays, we're going to try to um, test some out for a test stuff Tuesdays. Because um, I do have a sort of chaotic little Jumanji-esque board game that I'm trying to create so that a bunch of people... Oh, cool. Can, okay. Um... But unfortunately, yeah. for other participants, uh, it might it might um, it might require a couple gigabytes because uh, some game some video games might pop up in the course of the video in the course of the board game that um, <clears throat> you might not have installed. <laughs> They're all free to play, but oh, is morning. this your? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I finally have. I I feel like I have everything written down now. I just need to test it out to do. Um, how long does it take? Do things flow well? And do people hate it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but on Wednesdays, we're going to do a... Um, I, I don't think I'm actually going to do anything Wednesday because I get cut off halfway through the day. But um, Wiener Wednesdays! Strip do, poker all day. <laughs> but either on Wednesdays, on either on Wednesdays or Thursdays, I do want to do a way back Wednesday and a throwback Thursday in which... I go through this horrible, this horrible amalgam of games. You could do way back as like welcome early, to, early games welcome, and throwback. Welcome to the nineties. Throwback. People. So what if what if way back are are retro games you haven't played? Throwbacks are games from your childhood. Oh yeah, I can that could be that. make it. That could make it specific because uh, it's like the only thing. Though, a throwback that... is just throwing. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing though is that I think if I want to get through all two hundred and one games in here, um, I maybe it's just I do have yeah, to, just two days. I do probably have days to do of retro. one one like I have to do one every. I have to do four days, four games and four in a week. <laughs> four days and or four games in one week. If I want to do two. Oh, I see. To get to get through it okay. to, to the end of the year. All right, so maybe. Maybe just two two straight days of retro games. So yeah, so yeah. so Monday, Blender. If you don't like art, don't tune in. Tuesday, we're mm. testing stuff out. I'm gonna make a fool of myself and all the other stuff. Wednesday and Thursday, yeah. we're gonna do a whole bunch of old stuff. So if you like eight bit and sixteen bit and Windows ninety five. <laughs> Then, also, in testing out some of those games, I really hate the controls of the OG Doom. Can't stand it. <laughs> oh, what? So that's what I've been. So that's the. Have you been spying on me? Because that's what our next episode on Bad of is on. <laughs> is no, the I first Doom? Spy. <laughs> it's just because. What? It's, what didn't you like about Doom? It, no, the controls. I hate the controls. Yeah, what, like, what, why? Why? Because there's no strafe. It's all strafe. I have to, I have to, <laughs> well, I have to turn and then walk forward. Like, if, like, my, if I, so it's, no, you it's, don't. It's up, down, left, right for me. So, no, I, you can, when I hit, you can stream. Oh, when I hit, when I hit left, I'm, you're it playing turns. on the computer. Yeah. You're playing on the computer. Yeah. So I need to figure See, I got out. it. I have it for. I went and got one, two, and three for on the Switch, and we're playing it, uh, and it's just cheeky. All right, but that's the that's the schedule for what's coming up on this channel as far. So, as a recap, for for myself, Monday art, Tuesday probably newer video games, more modern video games. Wednesday and Thursday, probably older games that I'll kind of sprinkle in some modern games if I get really tired and sleepy. Friday, I'm probably <coughs> going to be editing stuff, so probably no stream then. And then Saturday and Sundays F are usually... Fuck off, fuck off Friday. <laughs> Saturdays and Sundays are usually here, and we talk about nonsense. 
either art or stories. Um, however, I may combine you with um, with my other with my other co-host in a topic yeah. pretty soon because we're getting to that point now where I'm starting to go into topics that have more <laughs> have more have more um, broadness than than just the one like. It's just story, or it's oh, just gotcha. the design. Okay, okay. And on Andrew's sure. section, yeah. I can't wait to edit this later. Um, Smart One Productions on YouTube, yeah. check it out. He, he proves that he's bad at video games. <laughs> not not proves, but and you can get I was, updates. I actually, yeah. You can get updates. I'm actually pretty to good at Doom on Instagram <laughs> at Smart One Productions. This has been some sort of talk show. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you all a calm rest of the month. Wash and your hands. hands. Stay six feet away from each other. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, let's, we said that sort of funny, but it's also, like it, it's, also it's not funny. funny. Like actually be very, this is, but remember it, it's yeah. okay. It is okay to go outside. It's just not, you know, like if you need to go for a jog or something, yeah. it's just not, yeah. you know, just be don't safe. go to the mall. Malls are closed. <laughs> don't go to, don't just go to, don't go to spring break. Gen Y or Gen Z, whatever they are. All right. And Just be that, smart about it. Just be smart. And with that, um, I hope to see at least a few of you on Monday. So have a good week. Bye. Bye.